This is Dave with Taboo Customs. A few weeks ago, we posted a picture on our Facebook page that showed the center section of a Jeep TJ frame that was one of the worst center sections that we had seen in quite a while. So this Jeep is actually here. We're going to take the uh, video and go through the Jeep and we're going to talk about what we're going to look for to help us determine whether or not this Jeep can be fixed. In addition to that, we'll also talk about a lot of the areas on the Jeep frames and some on the body that you can look for whenever you're going to purchase a, new, a different TJ or on your own TJ at home. So the first thing we'll start with is we'll look at the worst part of this frame here and that is the, uh, the center section on the driver's side. Now the center section on the driver's side, they, they used to have the steps on here, the stock steps, and that's actually one of the things that uh, has helped to increase the amount of rust. Now, I mean, you can see it did, there is some extra material around these, but in the areas that those steps were mounted, items inside the frame tend to build up and it'll actually cause the rust to go up higher. The front one's not too bad. The rear one, though, that's one of the areas that whenever we're looking at this frame is a little bit sketchy. When we get to the other side, we'll talk about how we go in and we look at the gauge of this frame to determine can we save this frame or not. Now with the, uh, the center section, you can see here are the bolts here for the skid plate that's fallen out. The bolts, so they use a, uh, a riv nut type nut up inside the frame, which uh, you know tend to, as they start to rust, either break or they'll strip out or just spin. Um, in this case, the whole thing just kind of went to hell and just fell out. Really, there's very little holding this in except for this little strap here. Now, the rust goes all the way from the front body mount of the frame all the way back, and it's kind of level here at the back of the frame as the frame starts to go up. Typically what we'll see is that will stay level, won't go up much higher past here. Now a lot of times what happens is these frames will get filled with mud or sand or, or any other debris and that debris will hold, hold moisture. And then again if you're in the, the rust belt where we're using salt on the roads during the winter, the debris in there will also collect that salt and then uh, for years you'll just have that salt and mud and sand mix inside there and it'll rust out so you can see that's why you get kind of this line especially back here at the back now in addition to that the rear control arm lower control arm is actually broken off that's not too unusual we've seen that quite a few times in, uh, in different Jeeps um, the upper control arm mount is still connected at the top but it's pretty much not connected at the bottom. So in, when we show you the other side, you'll see how little this axle is really being held in. So this is the passenger side of the frame. And when we got the Jeep, it does not look nearly this bad. What we did is we took a needle scaler and we ran the needle scaler from the, the front to the back of the frame, breaking up uh, any of the rust, finding any soft spots, and then we cleared out the inside of the frame until we had a, you know, a Inch, and a, inch to inch and a half deep pile of rust on the floor. Um, after that, we started taking off the uh, uh, the stock steps that were here, and that's actually when we found that this this area of the frame broke away. Because what was actually holding that area of the frame up was the stock step. So as you can see here, when we put the stock step up here, the uh, this hole was up here in line with the stock step. So when we unbolted that that's actually what was holding this area of the frame together and now it's going to allow this axle to actually twist backwards so that's one of the difficult things that whenever you're going to repair these jeeps is whenever these brackets do completely break off you have to try to get them back in the correct location so for this one luckily it hasn't completely broken off you know we can take a ratchet strap we'll ratchet strap it forward until we get this to line back up so that we can get this side at least in a, a pretty well close to what it was location. Now one of the other things that we'll look at and the main thing that we'll look at is I know I know all of this looks crazy and, and bad however that's not a huge issue. What the big issue is and the biggest thing you need to look at is how much material at the top of your frame do you have that's still good material? Now you can see how bad this frame is. Now even though it looks this bad, 
the material up here towards the top of the frame is actually pretty good. So what we did is we, to show an example, we cut this little section out of the frame. And you can see in this section here how fast as you get down here towards the rust, it really drops off. So up here is a normal thickness of the frame, which is about a 10 gauge frame. And then as you get down, and you have to, you have to get down to about this area here before the thickness of the frame really goes away. Now that's one thing that whenever you're looking at these frames, you can kind of feel up in there with your finger and you can feel where that starts to drop down pretty easily. So what we'll do is we'll go through here and we'll check and see where that drop is. So like here, it's about right there. And what we want is we want to be at least within a half inch of the top of the frame here. That way we know we have our kit, which typically comes up to within a half inch, quarter inch of the frame, has enough material at the top to be able to weld to. So before we get into talking about other areas of the frame to look for whenever you're, you're looking at TJs or on your own TJ, let's start with the big question of this video. Is this frame going to be repairable? Now, as mentioned, the first thing we did, we came in, we used a needle scaler, we found all the weak points of the frame, busted off all the big chunks of rust on the outside, cleaned that frame out because the main thing we wanted to do was make sure that we could see everything that we're working with. Then the next step was to understand really this line here of where the rust starts from the top of the frame. That is really the key component in will our kit just work by itself. So we've gone through and it's pretty easy in here, you know, running your fingers down to feel where that, where that big quick drop off occurs. And actually going through this frame as bad as it is, we found that it is a half inch or three quarters below the top of the frame, pretty much in every section of the frame, even this section over here, which is, is pretty bad where the step was mounted it actually drops off about right here. Now there's a lot of pitting on the outside of the frame that we're gonna to have to clean off, but the thickness of the frame is still there. So this, this, can, this Jeep is a candidate to be fixed with our kits alone. Now, if you do have a Jeep where this thickness, you know, this rust goes up closer than a half inch to the top of the frame, you know, I, I, you can fix anything with enough material and enough time. Uh, our kit though would not technically work exactly for that. You would have to add to it to be able to do that. You know, you'd have to add some sort of cap over the top uh, to do that. But with this Jeep here, you know, as bad as it is, you know, and you can see it, we'll be able to fix this with our kits. Now to do that, we're actually gonna have to use three kits because we don't have one kit solely that will cover this whole thing. And that actually is a little bit to our advantage because we have several things we have to maintain the position of, you know, we have to maintain the position of these bolts here. We have to maintain pain the position of our control arm mounts. So that'll allow us to install some good material and we'll actually work here on the center and we'll have a rear kit and we'll also have our front kit to make sure that we get our center section kit tied in well. But we're gonna start in the center here, weld this kit up and then build off of that center section. So that'll give us something to actually add those center section, or excuse me, add those other outer two kits uh, two. So once we do that, we will uh, we'll post another video showing some comparisons before and after so you can see what we've gone and we've done with that kit. So now let's talk about a few areas, a few other areas of the frame that you'll want to look at if you're looking at purchasing a TJ or if you've already got a TJ and you're concerned about rust that you might have. All right, so we, as we've already discussed, two of the biggest areas are the control arm, rear control arm mounting area and the center section. Those are the two most common rusted areas on the TJs. However, there are some other areas that on, um, for some reason on specific TJs, you may see more rust in those areas uh, than you do in others. Uh, one area is the, the rear upper buckets for the coil springs. And you can see here with this Jeep that these are starting to break away you know, we've, we've gone in, needle scaled this, there's not much still holding it there. Now the good thing of this is that it will, you know, the inside is actually still pretty well uh, solid. It's really just this outside that's rusted away. So, 
you know, really right now it just looks bad. It's not going to break loose. It's not going to go anywhere, but it's something that uh, definitely within the next five years would probably need to be fixed to, uh, to really, you know, be there and work, work well. You know, the other area, another area to look at is this rear frame area. Now, on the YJs, the previous uh, Jeep models, this was one of the worst areas. Now, the TJs, it's gotten a little bit better. Um, however, sometimes there's still concerns with this area. This one here is pretty good. It's still pretty solid. Um, however, if you go in here, there is where the metal is starting to delaminate some on the inside, um, but it's not delaminating enough to where it's compromising the thickness of the frame there uh, especially you know one of the first places you'll see that's going to be on the bottom so if you look at these frames and you start to see that this bottom you know is getting soft or getting thin and we can reach in there and try, kind of feel the thickness of the frame once you you break off the uh, the rust on the inside you know and it's still pretty pretty thick in this area but this is another area to look at and make sure you don't have a lot of rust now you know, you don't have to worry so much about the suspension um, in this area like you did on the Jeep YJs. But for the TJs, the big deal is that a lot of people have aftermarket tire carriers or they'll have a, a shackle point or something mounted to the rear portion of this frame. So as this frame starts to rust, you have to be careful because, you know, if you're going out and you're doing a lot of wheeling, you're yanking on those, there's a chance you could actually break the frame in here. Um, when it gets bad enough that uh, you know starts to look like the areas up here in the center section of the frame It would be a bit of concern Another area of concern is going to be the area where the front lower control arm mounts now It's pretty it's it's pretty rare that you see issues here But we have seen on certain TJ's where this area will rust out and part of the reason for that is that you know, again, just like I talked in the beginning of the video, getting material stuck down in here inside the frame. Uh, sometimes if there gets to be something clogging this frame and a lot of material goes in this hole here, it can fill up and if it stays there for years, this section will actually rust out. Uh, so that's one area that you'll also want to look at. But as you can see, as bad as this frame is, this one here is really still incredibly solid and has you know, original paint not only on the sides but also on the bottom. So the last section of the frame we'll talk about is this front section of the frame. Uh, really the first 12 inches of the frame is where we will sometimes see uh, rust build up and a lot of that's also because again this is the section of the frame where it starts to come down and things can pull up here in the bottom. Now amazingly you know looking at the center section of the frame you know and this section of the frame it looks night and day this is not a different frame it's the same frame as we've been using this whole video however this area of the frame is about as good as it's going to get i mean there's even no delamination on the inside of the frame i can't feel in there and feel rust even down at the bottom of the frame which is really kind of crazy but one thing you'll definitely want to look at is especially on the driver's side because that's where the steering box is mount come and look in this frame now we have seen some frames where you'll start to develop a crack if this area rusts from this steering box mount up into the frame definitely if you start to see rust in this area make sure you get it replaced uh, somewhat the same on the passenger side of the front of the frame however not necessarily as critical because you don't have the steering box mounted over there but we have seen some issues with rust build up at the front on the passenger side as well all right so why go through the work of repairing the center section of that frame rather than just replacing the frame? There's a lot of things that go into that. One, with TJs, it's going to be pretty hard for you to find a frame that is in good shape. A lot of them are going to, you know, maybe not to this degree, but somewhere they're going to have an issue probably with rust on the frame if it's a, unless it's a frame from a TJ that's been sitting in a junkyard for many years. Chances are you're not going to find that anyway because, you know, Jeepers tend to pick through junkyards and pull everything Jeep out of there pretty pretty quickly. The other thing is if you go and you do try to replace this frame there are hundreds of items now that you're going to have to remove from the frame. So chances are you're going to run into a dozen, couple dozen different areas where you're going to have similar issues to what you see here because if you watch the rest of this video you're going to see that the body mounts on this Jeep are really rusted out. So chances are none of the body mounts on this Jeep are going to come out cleanly so you're gonna to have to repair all of those along with probably any kind of suspension bolts that don't want to come out 
uh, very easily or anything else that doesn't want to unbolt. So you're gonna spend a, probably a lot more time swapping out that frame than you are just to go and install the rust repair kits or even to hire someone to install those rust repair kits for you. All right, so now that we've talked about the frame, let's talk a little bit about the body. And we'll work from front to rear on the body. And there's a, there's a lot of places to look for for rust. Unfortunately, you know, you're probably, unless you're buying a, a really late model TJ, it's had been well, really well maintained, garage kept, kept out of salt, you're probably going to see some of this rust. Now, the most common area is, uh, is the area here on top of the fender. And the reason for that is there's actually a double panel here. The well, Jeep, when they designed this, they put another panel underneath. And for some reason, they filled it with a foam. And I don't know if that's for anti-flutter or what it was, but actually on this Jeep, the only thing that's left in this area right here is that foam that was on the inside of the uh, inside of those two panels. Both the top of the panel and the bottom panel rusted away. But that's definitely one area that you want to look at. But replacement fenders are readily available and actually pretty pretty fairly priced. However, you'll need to paint them if you want to get them. Another area to look at as far as the the rust is uh is, and this is typical in most jeeps it's going to be this area here and uh, the reason for that is whenever they design the tubs there's typically on the inside of these tubs there's a another panel that comes down now on the yj's it's a little bit worse than the tj's it's a little bit better because the panel kind of goes inward doesn't trap as much material but you're going to want to check you know around in this area for uh, for heavy rust and then also along the bottom edge here and you can see that for most of the part, most part, this area is pretty good, and that's actually where the the floor will meet the side of the tub. The material can get stuck in there, and, and dirt and water can uh, and lead to rust. But you can see back here, you know, it's actually started to rust through the body. You know, and part of that is from the rear tire swinging all that salt up here to get it gets caught on a little ledge here, and then will start to rust out. So you want to check along those areas. Uh, for rust. So while we're on the center section of the tub, another area that you should definitely want to take a look at is going to be the bottom, this subframe uh, mount here that's uh, mounted to the bottom of the tub. A lot of times with these you'll find something hopefully not nearly as bad. This is one of the worst that I've seen where both this body mount and this body mount are not even connected to the tub anymore this is rusted out so much that that area is gone now uh, we are developing a kit for this but we don't have this kit out yet at the time of the video sometime in the future we will have a kit to be able to fix this but this is one area that you are going to want to check and make sure because it is pretty common nowadays to start to see this where this body mount and this body mount rusts out as well as sometimes the body mount in front of this so another area to check as we move uh, farther back on the Jeep tub on the outside here is the rear wheel well area. There's a couple places in the rear wheel, wheel well area with, that you'll see problems. Um, one is on the front of the wheel well area here where you've got this ledge that will uh, collect material. But actually the ledge looks pretty good. However, there is a cavity here on the inside just like we have at the front of the uh, center section of the tub where material can catch and as you can see basically this was not a hole whenever uh, this Jeep came off the uh, factory floor this is rusted through actually rusted through to the inside here because that's actually the inside of the tub right there and that's just for material being thrown up here and collecting inside that cavity now you'll have to look for the same thing at the rear of the wheel well where there's a, a couple other areas where you'll have some ledges places for uh, material to get caught up and uh, the rust to start to start. So as we move from the outside to the inside of the Jeep there's a couple places to look at. One is going to be the floorboard area at the front. So with the floorboard area obviously people get in and out with mud, salt, uh, whatever on their feet. It's going to cause some rust. Uh, typically you at least see some surface rust. Uh, but if you've got a TJ that's had the carpet in it its whole life and then let's say it's had a, uh, a leak from the hard top or the soft top uh, that hasn't been fixed um, there might be rust underneath the carpet, so make sure you pull back the carpet, check out the floorboards in the front. The other big area to check out is going to be the area in the, in the uh, rear floorboard area around the roll bar. 
Now we did another video uh, earlier this year where we went through a Jeep that we found that the roll bar completely rusted off at the bottom where the foot meets the uh, the floorboard. So you're going to want to check and make sure that your roll bar isn't rusted out and then the floorboard around that roll bar isn't rusted out either. Amazingly with this Jeep, as we've mentioned with a lot of TJs, is that we've got rust, heavy rust in some places, not much rust at all in other places. You know, with this Jeep here, you saw the body mounts underneath are completely gone, but the floorboard is in great shape. The roll bar is in great shape. Neither floorboard or the roll bar really shows any signs of rust, which is odd, you know. So TJs are kind of like that. Um, when you go through TJs, you kind of got to look at all of the different areas, but just to make sure, because there's, there's typically at least one or two that are going to be bad, but uh, it's kind of, you know, especially if you find one that has all those areas bad, you might want to avoid it. But, uh, but they are really hit, hit or miss, you know, some, some are really good, some are really bad in certain areas. So stay tuned for the next installment of this video series where after we do the repairs to the center section of the frame, we'll come back and show you the before and the after of those repairs. And we'll talk about, you know, anything that we might have ran into doing the substantial repair like this. Uh, in addition, you know, keep watching our other videos, and if this video has helped you out at all, please like or subscribe or visit our Facebook page and like us there.